How's it going everybody? It's Potty Flaming. We are back with another FPL video and today we're going to be taking a look at the best captaincy choices for this upcoming game week, which is a double game week in 32 for specifically Tottenham Hotspurs themselves. And I think that you know that this man right here, Harry Kane, is going to be on all of our shopping lists if we don't have him. And if you do have him, maybe some triple captaincies are being, going to be coming out. I'm certainly triple captaining him to make up for the fact that I took a minus 20 if you want to check how i did that go check out the preview uh which is already on the channel it's a long stream and it was done towards the end of the stream so make sure to check that out as well and you can also join us for the deadline stream and that sort of stuff to see uh well why that was my decision and, and that sort of stuff as well uh also make sure to uh give a like on the video if you haven't done so already subscribe to the channel if you are new and turn those notification bells on so you can get the content as soon as it is readily available and drop us a follow over on twitter so you can keep up to date with all that sort of stuff such as video posts and when we go live and speaking of when we go live we will be doing another deadline stream uh, on Twitch, that's going to be this Friday, 12.30 p.m. EST. There'll be a pinned comment down below. Twitch is where we do all of our streams, whether we preview or deadline streams. So without further ado, let's see who's on the captaincy list this week. So probably the most obvious choice for the captaincy this week. He has a double game week. He's been firing on all cylinders. The man is red hot. It is Harry Kane himself. He's playing Everton away, who have been quite bad uh, at home uh, at Goodison Park. And Harry Kane can definitely do some damage versus them. Uh, as well as Southampton, who just conceded three to West Brom and probably could have conceded a lot more as well. Kane's racked up 19 goals, which is top of the division, uh, with 13 assists to combat that. Only getting two points versus Man United, but I think he's probably going to be the best captain, most highly captain, and most triple captain player uh, for this season, uh, no doubt about that. If you have both Kane and Son, I would say that you would go for Kane. It just makes more sense. He's on penalties. He seems to be more involved. He's second for XGI, expected goal involvement with 3.60 in the entire division uh, for midfielders, defenders, and forwards. He's third for big chances uh, across all players with four over the last four game weeks, and he's fourth for shots in the box over the last four uh, four matches, uh, sorry, for, um, for the last four matches, four shots in the box with nine. Um, and yeah, double game week, triple captaincy seems good for Kane. Both fixtures are quite good. Both teams that he's playing against have injury concerns uh, in certain areas, which make them much weaker than what they normally be. For Southampton, it's Romeu at uh, center defensive midfield. And their constant changing of goalkeeper or, you know, their change of goalkeeper midway through the season with Forrester over McCarthy. And then for Everton, they just lost another center back in Yeri Mina. Uh, you know, Calvert-Loon was out for unexpected reasons. They've had Dinier out for a time. They've had James Rodriguez on and off throughout the season. Alan doesn't seem to be fit as well. So I think Kane just seems to be a prime target for the captaincy and the triple captaincy this game week. Now, Son is the next player up on our list. He's got 14 goals, 9 assists to his name, and obviously has the same double game week as Harry Kane as he plays on the same team. Now, if you don't have Kane, I would say Son is the next best option just because he has a double game week and is most likely going to be playing both games, playing the full 90 minutes, much like Kane as well. The only thing that's concerning is his stats over the past four matches. Only two big chances with the one goal, which came versus Manchester United. And his chances have gone down significantly in terms of chance creation. He's only gotten four over the last four matches. So the chances created basically won a match, which isn't ideal those were way up when Bale was in the team mainly because a lot more people were paying attention to Bale and Kane as more of like a strike do and he was able to kind of create from wide as Bale tended to drift more centrally because of him cutting in on his left foot where Son can cross uh, both with his right and left foot and is you know quite competent on both whereas Bale kind of favors his left foot and Kane likes to stay centrally uh, when he can because he's more lethal obviously from the center of the goal when he has both sides of the goal to choose from and given the chance we'll definitely put it in the back of the net. I think that Kane is going to be uh, so highly owned and so highly effectively owned that he is better to be captain in you know this coming game week and is the better triple captaincy option. Basically, what will happen is Son probably won't be uh, over 100% effective ownership, 
even though his, his ownership is 44.4%. And what we mean by effective ownership is that if you have them in your team and they are over 100% effective ownership, you lose rank when they score points because those people have captained them which means they get more points for it and you're just basically not getting too much. So basically if you have Kane and Son and you captain Son, Kane's definitely going to be over 100% effective ownership this week, especially with the triple captaincy chips flying around. That doesn't really have affect uh, effective ownership. It's just the captaincy itself. But Son is more likely to be under 100%, so it's better to just captain Kane uh, in the end of it. Unless there was obviously an injury, in which case then you would pick Son over Kane. But I would say only way I'm, you would be captaining Son is if you have only Son and not Kane. In which case I'd be saying you probably want to get Kane in as well. But I think Son is probably the next best thing for the captaincy this game week. Now, in terms of single game week players, Fernandez is probably top of the list with the most amount of points. 216, 16 goals, 13 assists, absolutely outstanding season, close to 58% ownership across all managers. Only getting two points again, uh, Son was the only real FPL asset to score uh, for uh, either team in game week 31. And Burnley is a team that uh, have frustrated United in the past, although over the past uh, few game weeks, Burnley have been, been looking more and more porous defensively, and they have the fourth worst XT conceded with 7.52 over the last four matches against other opposition. So that means they're conceding, or what would think to be conceding, more and more chances, which just doesn't seem right for a Burnley team that usually prides themselves on defense first and like kind of nicking that 1-0. And someone like Fernandez is definitely capable of the the magical and the spectacular and is also good for the penalty spot as well, which is an added feather in his cap. He's second for chances created among all midfielders, so he's not just goals, he's also assists. Uh, he has uh, 11 of those over the last four matches, and he's top for XGI, expected goal involvement with 3.05 among all midfielders in the game as well. So if you have, if you don't have Kane and you don't have Son and you have no way of really getting them in without taking an absolutely ridiculous amount of points uh, just to bring in that one player, Fernandez, I would say, is probably the best single game week player in, for the captaincy and I think he could definitely do well and I also think that he will not be over 100% effective ownership because a lot of people are going to be flocking to Kane and Son for the captaincy and the triple captaincy so Fernandez being in the team this week if he scores and he's under 100% effective ownership you're going to get rank rises for that which is something that doesn't really happen with Fernandez uh, very often so I think if you do captain him could be a bit of a differential I would personally stick with the double game weakers but Single game week for Fernandez doesn't really get much better than Burnley at home. And I definitely think he can be on the score sheet this game week. And I would say the second best option for a single game week player is Mohamed Salah. Someone who scored 2-2, two 19 goals on the season as well. He's tied with Harry Kane in the division uh, for the most goals. And he is also top for shots inside the box. That's where you want most Salah shooting inside the box and of a high volume. These are Salah-like stats. He's also third for big chances across the whole division with four. And he's second uh, among all midfielders for XGI over the last four matches with 2.75. And Liverpool is a team that is slowly gaining confidence. We'll see how they do versus Real Madrid in midweek. That game being played tomorrow uh, at the time of recording. And I think that that game may drain a little bit out of them. Salah is potentially like rumored to maybe the next player to be benched. Obviously, it was Firmino a couple weeks ago. It was Mane last week. Maybe it's Salah's turn this week. But I don't think Liverpool can afford to bench him. I think they have to win every game that they play. He's their best player. He's got the most goals for the team. He's doing the most for the team. And if Mane and him can strike up a partnership like they did in previous seasons, then they will be on form for a potential you know, late run into the top four. And it starts with Leeds away. Leeds away is not going to be an easy game for them. Their high tempo man marking system is very different to what you're going to see in every, pretty much every Premier League team. And that's going to drain a lot out of them. If they come out of the Champions League and they get, you know, beaten heavily by Real Madrid again, you know, 3-0, 3-1, something like that. 
then they may be a bit, you know, kind of dejected going into the Leeds game, and that may cause them to drop points, which is something they cannot do. So I don't expect Salah to be rested in this game, uh, whether they make it through the Champions League or not, because they definitely need to get top four if they want to have, you know, a good summer transfer window and bounce back from what was not the greatest title defense season. It is a bit of a weird season, so I definitely expect Liverpool to bounce back. And it starts with Mo Salah playing in the front three. And Leeds are going to give them space. And I think that's exactly what the likes of Salah, Firmino, and Mane want. Space in behind, able to counterattack. That's Liverpool's bread and butter. And I think it starts with Salah. And I would expect him to get some points this game week. And our differential captaincy choice for this week isn't really too much of a differential. The man's been on fire. Ian Acho from Leicester City. He's 5.9 million. He's got eight goals across the whole season with the 70 points. Just over 11% ownership. And he's come off a big 13-pointer getting uh, a brace versus West Ham, which kind of saw Leicester have potentially a chance for a point in that one, although they fell just short in their 3-2 loss to West Ham. He's top in the across the entire division for XGI with 3.77. He's second for big chances among all players as well over the last four matches. Coming off a brace, like we said, he's just been the man in form. And he's versus West Brom, who have been a bit more on the front foot recently. In the last couple of games, they've scored more goals than they have. I think it was in the last like 10 or 15 games. It was pretty crazy. They've scored eight goals in the last two games. And they have been a bit more open in the back, a bit more free-flowing up front, which could mean that Ian Acho, Vardy, you know, these sorts of players can get in behind and get the chances that they need. And Ian Acho has been very, very clinical when he's got even half a chance, even if it's outside the box. And I think that he could be a differential captaincy option and probably third on my list in terms of single game week players. Definitely go for more of the double gaming players like uh, Kane specifically and then Son if you don't have Kane. But Ian Acho, if you have him in your team, he's not going to be over 100% effective ownership. But a lot of people brought him on the wild card. I have brought him in this week as well. And I expect him to do well versus West Brom and over the next few fixtures as well. And I think that James, the likes of James Madison coming back into the team will only boost his output as well. So I think that he's struck up a good strike partnership with Vardy. And he's going to keep scoring. And for for someone who's 5.9 million, even if he gets rotated out of the team at some point, he is quite cheap, can be easily moved on. But I definitely expect him to score uh, even uh, one goal, possibly two goals again this game week. And that's going to do it for our best captaincy picks for game week 32. If you haven't done so already, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new or haven't done so already. And turn those notification bells on so that you can get the content as soon as it is readily available. And drop us a follow over on Twitter so that you can keep up to date with all our different posts, retweets, and any FPL news over there. And give us a follow over on Twitch so that you can join us for our preview and deadline streams. It's PilotFlame226. There'll be a pinned comment down below as to when our next FPL streams uh, usually are. I usually post uh, two streams in advance for that, that game week, a preview and a deadline. Uh, our next stream is the deadline stream on Friday. We will be here live on Twitch one hour before the deadline. So if you're seeing this over on YouTube, come join us over on Twitch and we will be there uh, for Friday's deadline stream. And uh, we've had a bunch of different people coming in, a bunch of different FPL managers, bringing their questions, showing their opinions. And it's great to see the FPL community is fantastic. So make sure to come join us over for that one as well. Thanks for watching, and until the next one, take care.